Though I know it's really pretentious to wear a scarf and just a t-shirt, but... <laughs> <laughs> this isn't any scarf. This is a trophy. I earned this scarf through blood and tears. And this scarf reminds me of how much of a dumbass I am. <laughs> I am notorious for making horrible decisions. And it's been like that from day one. When I was born, I came out ass first, I had to be a C-section, and I was blue from head to toe. I couldn't even get the skin color right. <laughs> And this followed me for my whole life, to the point I made such catastrophic decisions that my parents had no choice at the age of 15 to send me to a mystical, magical, faraway land called St. John's School of Alberta, an all-boys boarding school just outside of Edmonton. Now, it's not a preparatory school. People tend to get that confused with St. John's. Preparatory school is where the kids that are, what, what's it, what do they have? Oh, hope. <laughs> St. John's isn't like a normal private school or a public school. It's very strict, right? We had to wear a uniform. It was yes sir, no sir. We didn't raise our hand. We stood up. We didn't have detention. We did push-ups and kilometers. I didn't have a door on my grade 9 dorm because that had to be earned. Because I didn't have rights. I had privileges. And at the end of the year, if you really liked a teacher, you would stand on that top of your desk and you would yell, Oh, Captain, my Captain. <laughs> and I've made a lot of mistakes in St. John's, but I say the one that I regret the most, that haunts me in my sleep, happened in my grade 10, 11 to 12 year. And I was just coming out of my dorm, and I was passing the laundry room. And it's these two big, greenish, bluish doors and one of, on one door it has this square hole, and it's about that wide, <laughs> and it has a chute at a 90 degree angle, and four friends of mine were standing out there looking co complexed and scared, and it was my friend Ross and Garrett from my grade, and Sabrinoff and Zarb from a younger grade. My friend Ross came up to me and he's like, Fergie! That was my nickname back then, because apparently I'm Fergalicious. <laughs> but he came up to me and he said, Fergie, we have a problem. The bus is leaving soon for home, right? There's no more rags. The door's locked. We can't find a teacher. There's one at the end of this laundry chute. Me and Sabrinoff are too wide. Garrett is too fat, and Zarb is too short. But you're just right, my friend. <laughs> We can hoist you up, put you in the laundry chute, take you out, and it'll be quick and easy. This is going to be awesome, what do you think? And I looked at Ross, and I thought about it, and I said, yes. <laughs> because at that time, the only thing I wanted was acceptance. One, because I never had friends, right? I grew up in northern Alberta, and for some reason, no one really liked me. And two... <laughs> That wasn't a laughing part, but thank you. <laughs> and two, you didn't just go to St. John's, you survived. Most of the kids that went to St. John's were your alpha male types. You know, that played sports and spent so much time in the gym, they couldn't touch their toes. And I've never been an alpha male. Shocking, I know. <laughs> but I have kept the same weight, about 90 pounds, my whole life. And my parents tried. My dad tried to teach me how to use tools when I was a kid, and he would take me on his handyman adventures around the house. But the only thing I learned was how to get yelled at while holding a flashlight. <laughs> And I was never into sports. When other kids were learning how to play hockey and learning how to skate, I was doing jazz and musical theater. And jazz handing your way down an all-boys boarding school hallway while singing West Side Story is going to get your ass kicked. So I became the, the kid that did stupid things. The fun kid. The kid that turned a hallway into a slip and slide. The kid that ran down naked through the hallway singing my lumps my lovely lady lungs. <laughs> and 
And now I was known as the kid being dangled down the laundry chute, Mission Impossible style. And I could see the, my goal at the bottom, just this square of light in the darkness. And I thought this was going to be awesome. People will sing my name in the hall, and I will be remembered. They will draw murals about me, and women will be impressed and be like, Oh, Robert, I want your body. You're so brave. <laughs> And as I was having these grandiose thoughts, uh, my other arm kind of like veered off and started to wrap around my neck. And my other hand was like, fuck it, I'm going to go that way too. <laughs> and I could feel the entrance of the laundry chute press against my hips, and I heard a muffled confusion from the other end going, crap, he's stuck. <laughs> Let's give one more pull. <laughs> and I heard the heave ho. And everything got cold from the waist up. <laughs> and the only thing I heard after that was like, Oh my god! That's disgusting! Why did you go commando? I... Oh my god, I touched it. What did we do? We should get a teacher. There aren't any teachers around. We need to get them out of there. Let's loop them up. You guys go to the kitchen, get butter. <laughs> and Garrett and I will go find a teacher. So Ross and Garrett went on their mission to find a teacher. Zapanoff and Zark went to the kitchen and brought back butter and started smearing it all over my body. <laughs> Ladies. But little did they know that they let a bomb off in St. John's. Because boring, boarding school is boring. Nothing happens. And when like shit like that goes down, it's the only entertainment we've had for months. And so you had four boys running through the school saying there's a half-naked student stuck in the laundry chute. They descended on me like an 18th century mob at a hanging. And I could hear their cheers in my dark, dank tunnel. And all I could hear was, put a broom in his ass! <laughs> spank him! Spank him harder! <laughs> and as I was dangling there at a 90 degree angle, the blood was rushing to my head, my bigger head. <laughs> And I could kind of see this, these, this object in the distance, so I said, screw it, I've come this far, I'm not going empty-handed. And about that time, that's when the teachers came. And I could hear the footsteps, and it was Mr. Hardy, the principal, the second in command of the school. And he looked at me, and he's like, is that Mr. Ferguson? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Your, parent, your grandparents are on your way to pick you up. <laughs> I just want you to know that we're going to get you out. And I have one question to ask you. Are you retarded or were you just dropped as a child? <laughs> it's a tough love. I, I never heard the conversation with my grandparents, but I like to think it went something like this. Hello? 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 Oh, Mr. Coates, it's Elma, Robert's grandmother. How are you? Oh, I'm sorry, my hearing's going. It sounds like you said he's stuck in a laundry chute. <laughs> oh, he is, just a minute. Bob! <laughs> Robert's stuck in a laundry chute! <laughs> I'm sorry, sweetie, my hearing's going. I thought you said he's stuck in a laundry chute. He is stuck in a laundry chute. Is he retarded or was he dropped as a child? <laughs> And they had to phone the janitor from Stony Plain, which was half an hour away. And I was just hanging there. The world was swirling, and I could feel the my just uh, the, the, the. that's how, what it felt like. <laughs> that's the only way I can describe it. And the janitor finally got there half an hour early, grumbling, and just ticked right off. Just damn freaking frick a frick a kids day off. Supposed to teach them responsibility. <laughs> Dumbass. <laughs> and as he, as I heard the drill take apart the shaft, <laughs> light flooded in. And someone put their hand on my head. And they pushed me through the hole. And it was like a rebirth for me. 
because I came out ass first and blew from head to toe. And I heard the cheers that I longed for as I lifted what I thought was the rag over my head, half naked in front of my peers, and it was this fucking scarf.